With the one game to play, um, there were quite a few changes, um, you know, going from the, the first mm. T20 to the second. What, what changes do you foresee in the final one? How important w would those changes be? Of course, the 50 over format being probably priority with the World Cup around the corner. Yeah, absolutely. The 50 over match, as Rob said, is the first one being played on Friday this week, you know, far more important looking ahead to the, to the Cricket World Cup. You know, it, it's such a lottery, this 2020, this, this dead rub, if you like. Mm. I wouldn't be surprised at all if South Africa win. You know, it would be nice maybe to see the West Indies bat first in this match, post the total, see how South Africa then, then um, chase that total down. Mm. You know, it wouldn't be surprising at all if the West Indies get rolled over now that it doesn't matter for 100 close to that and then Pro Tours romp to victory, take some momentum into the, the ODI series and then go on from there to the World Cup. In terms of changes, I, I don't expect to see both spinners, P Pangisa and Tahir, playing. You know, I'm sure they'll drop one of them, mm. might give Pangisa a, a chance. You know, Tahir's already in the, the squad for the, the ODIs and, and the World Cup to see what Pangisa can do. Um, you know, Tahir is playing for the Dolphins, so he is, Durban is now his, his home ground. Mm. But, you know, um, Parnell might come back into the, to the mix to give a bit of variation, the, you know, the left arm over. So, you know, I wouldn't be surprised there. Monier van, van Vake hasn't really and taken his chances with Quinton, van, uh, Quinton de Kock's injury, but he again also playing now down in Durban, so he might feel more at home at, at Kingsmead. So, you know, you, you never really know with this, this squad. You know, I don't mm. think much stock is placed in it. I think, you know, we could roll out any 11 players and on the day, if things go right, if Chris Gale doesn't go, for, you know, take us apart, we could win comfortably. So, difficult to say what the changes, but it'll be nice to see some, some new faces in, in the mix. Maybe give Marshant Lange another chance, David Visser another chance. You know, we're not going to rush back any of the Stains, mm. the Philanders and Morkels or anything like that. So, we've got to deal mm. with what we've got basically in the squad at the moment. Mm. Of course, uh, staying in Durban, straight into the first of the ODIs. Um, just going back to Chris Gell, when he received his Man of the Match award yesterday, he seemed to have a bit of a dig. I don't know if you saw that at the selectors, for not including mm -hmm. Pollard and Bravo, Bravo. In, the, in the side. He almost dedicated his performance to them. Um, w w is there a bit of uh, sort of a, a political thing going on there? There is. I mean, there's, there's, a, there's a big feud between individual players and the West Indies Cricket Board. Look, you, you have to feel some sympathy for, for the West Indies mm -hmm. uh, Board of Control because they, uh, you know, it, it's such a fractured alliance. It's not one country. Um, it's a whole set of different countries, mm -hmm. uh, each with their own sort of uh, attitudes, policies, etc. Yeah. Uh, so trying to mold them as uh, from a cricket point of view uh, is, is, is tricky, especially at times when, when uh, you know, um, pickings are a bit lean for the West Indies. So that, that adds to a little bit of a, a sense of sort of uh, discord and distrust and disharmony etc so uh, it's not a it's not a comfortable state of affairs in West Indies cricket generally and what's happened Nick is that a, a lot of their, their best individual players are now so prioritizing t20 they've become individual market marketable commodities uh, within their own rights as individuals and and frankly to some extent uh, you know it, it, maybe the administrators get a bit frustrated because they almost think that West Indies come second to some of these guys who are you know very committed to IPL sides mm. you know obviously IPL sides and and other franchises uh, in, in t20 the world over are wanting to have Bravos, Pollards, Gales mm. in their ranks because they are among the most explosive players on the planet. Mm. So it creates a difficult dynamic. And, uh, and of course they pay them accordingly. Absolutely. You the know, West Indies cricket board. Yeah. Yeah. West Indies has, is, has, is, is cash strapped a lot of the uh -huh. time. So big problems there. It's not an easy one to solve. Mm. But um, you know, I just hope that the West Indies still manage to be competitive at the World Cup because uh, mm. on paper they'll still be a, a good team to watch even though um, the selectors have snubbed certain of those mm. key players that you mentioned, which is a terrible shame because I mean, a lot of South African commentators, Sean Pollock was just one who was saying, what an awful shame that the, uh, you know, the cricket world is going to mm. be deprived of, of names like that at the World Cup. Surely you want the very best players yeah, sure. playing. And Chris Gale made, made no bones about the fact that he's, mm. he's disgruntled about some of those, those big names being missing. Um, and that you know, it means that some of their, their, um, their remaining uh, sort of uh, keynote individuals are going to have to carry the can a lot more for if the West Indies are to produce uh, sort of a, a bit of an upset, if you like, by going mm. a really long way at the, at the 50 overs World Cup. I still think 2020 is more their game than the 50 no. overs game. I think there'll be a bit less of a factor at mm. the World Cup, although, I don't know, maybe famous last words.